I want to specifically come to uh, Muslims in India and, uh, and how there seems to be almost a coordinated effort uh, by a lot of media houses to, uh, you know, portray India in a particular way, you know, like hostile uh, to Muslims. And they do that by cherry picking um, certain isolated incidents. Uh, so can you tell us how is this narrative, this fake narrative uh, being built by these, uh, you know, forces? Sure. Um, Kamalji, see, people, people are very intelligent, you know, uh, people understand that something is wrong, but they are just not able to put, you know, finger on it, okay, this is happening, or, you know, this has happened. So I would like to summarize it, or maybe try to express it. Uh, uh, see, when we talk about that, you know, Muslims, uh, the, the situation of Muslims uh, is bad in India, this, this kind of a narrative building is being done these days. At times I find is laughable and uh, at times it is very painful for me. It becomes painful because, um, because I do not find words to express the, the amount of love, the amount of acceptance, the amount of uh, rights I exercise in my country. It is, it is very difficult for me to put it in words. You know, there are, there are some feelings, there are some things which can only be felt. It is very difficult to express. If I ask you how much your mother loves you, would you be able to express it? Of course, it would be like, what a stupid kind of a question. Of course, anybody would feel that, you know, I have to give that explanation for my motherland. You know, how do I live in India as a Muslim is a very, very... Uh, uh, unfortunate question that I have to answer, but yes, um, I would like to answer because people need to know. See, there is definitely a coordinated effort, Kamalji, which is uh, being done by cherry picking of incidences. And uh, they try to build a narrative which is against India. They try to paint Bharat in a very negative light. They try to humiliate it. And um, I call it a new way of invasion. I call it, you know, I, I always say that the invasion of Bharat is still happening. It's just that their modus operandi have changed. This is 21st century. So they cannot invade by killing people, you know, and by killing them by swords. They do it by humiliating our country. You know, they do it by building a narrative against Bharat. And um, unfortunately, some people fall for it. But uh, now the times are changing. Even Muslims are realizing the importance of Bharat. Muslims are able to compare their life in Bharat and lives of other Muslims in other Islamic states. You know, this is global civilizations. We have social media. We get to, you know, feel other people's pain. We, we also get to hear news and the happenings around the world. So it is no rocket science to differentiate that a Muslim in India and a Muslim outside India. You know, zameen or asman ka to mein bolti hoon, bhoat chota hai, zameen or patal ka fark hai. There is no comparison, you know, whatsoever. And um, I would like to give you a few examples. Uh, pe people who do not know, I would like to know. See, first mosque after Medina was built in Bharat. It was built uh, on a land which was given in charity by a Hindu king. Hindu Raja ne apni zameen daan dekar masjid banwai thi and that was the first mosque after Medina. And not just one mosque, there are thousands and lakhs of mosques and madarsas in Bharat which are standing tall and with, with respect and with dignity and people celebrate them. Even, you know, even non-Muslims go and, you know, worship there. So many dargahs we have. And, you know, non-Muslims also go and worship there and, you know, respect them wholeheartedly. You know, even more than Muslims, non-Muslims go to these dargahs. So that kind of a, uh, celebration we feel for different faiths. And um, then we have minority status. You know, I find it very unfortunate, Kamalji, because when Bharat was divided or and when, when Pakistan was taken away, then, of course, at that time, Muslims were minorities. And I, I, do not, I, I truly do not feel that minority status was needed because Bharat has never persecuted any minority group whatsoever. But still, for the sake of their mental um, peace, they were given that minority status, ki, okay, nothing will wrong, uh, not, not, nothing wrong will happen to you. But now, 
Muslims are almost 30 plus crore, 30, 35 crore people do not qualify to be called minorities. But still Muslims are celebrating the status of minorities in India, in Bharat, and they get so many facilities, they get so many subsidies in, in the name of, uh, you know, being minorities. And um, still these anti-national forces build these narratives that, you know, uh, things, bad things are happening to Muslims. All these anti-national forces do that. I've covered the names of those anti-national forces in my previous question. Uh, they, they build this false narrative against Bharat and try to put uh, those seeds of separation in, the, in a Muslim mind so that a Muslim does not relate to a Bharat as their motherland or they, uh, they fall you know, victim to that victim card. Okay, I'm a Muslim, I'm a minority. So that minority is not a status, it is a card which is being played to blackmail Muslims' mind, to manipulate Muslim mind, and to actually use them just as headcounts or foot soldiers to fulfill their maybe political agenda and their religious agenda of making Bharat an Islamic state. So two people use this victim card of minority card against Muslims. Dharm satta chalane wale Islamic state belief wale log and political leaders who just try to use Muslims as vote banks. So these two people use that minority card. I would like to give you two examples, Kamalji. And uh, it, will, it will explain this uh, narrative very, very, in a very simple manner. Like uh, we've heard, uh, just like few, uh, some time ago, we, uh, we heard that mob lynchings are happening in India and Muslims are being lynched in India. And um, I was also called on national debates, national channels. And I was asked, what do you have to say about mob lynchings? I said, see, as a Bharatiya, I would definitely say that if a, if a Muslim has been killed by, by any, anybody whatsoever or anybody is killed by a mob or by, by people, it is wrong. You know, when we say that Atma is not different from Paramatma, we do not, we do not believe in killing people. Of course, it is a crime, it is an offense and it is wrong. But it is equally wrong to name it and label it as mob lynching. It is equally wrong to start calling your country as Lynchistan. It is equally wrong to, you know, start beating your chest and go to United Nations that see uh, this thing is happening to Muslims because I, I do not want to uh, use that statistics because it founds, it doesn't, uh, it, it sounds very inhuman in such examples, but still I would like to use that statistic that we are almost 135 crore people. In 135 crore people, if two Muslim boys are killed, you know, it is, the number is so small that you cannot even calculate it in percentage and you call Bharat Linchistan. You know, that kind of a narrative building, that cherry picking, that is a crime. We, it should not happen. Not even one, one person should be killed. But that does not give you that liberty to start calling your country Linchistan. That does not give you the liberty to start defaming your country. You just use it as an opportunity to start defaming Bharat. That's what they do. And I would like to give you an example, although it is, it is not an appropriate thing to do, but still it is very important to give that example here, that similar unfortunate incidents have happened to non-Muslims also. You know, uh, we've heard incidents like uh, uh, lynching of An Ankit Saxena, Dhruv Tyagi, but these incidents, because they are not Muslim names, these incidents, they are seldom reported, they are seldom talked about. You know, then people do not go to United Nations. So that Muslim name suits their politics of religion and their politics to rule. So that is why they use it against Bharat. That's what they do by cherry picking. And exception, they start making exceptions rules. You know, exceptions, they, they, they start that narrative building against Bharat, which is, which is very wrong. And another example would explain it very beautifully, Kamalji, uh, that few days ago we were talking about uh, incidents of love jihad. Like, you know, in many places, like in Kashmir, we've had thousands of girls who were being married and, you know, they were forced to convert and girls who were not uh, willing to convert, they were even being killed. You know, one incident happened in Ballabgad in Haryana. There was a girl called Nikita Tomer. She was, um, th there was a guy who was after her and was asking her to convert and then marry him. She refused to convert and the guy shot her dead on the streets. So 
many many thousands and lakhs of incidents of love jihad were there uh, you know uh, modus operandi were different uh, were doing it in different ways but their main agenda was that converting hindu girls marrying them in the name of love and uh, just trying to spread their faith so that is why it was called love jihad so you know then these people were not labeling it as love jihad then these people were saying okay if a muslim guy has done that to a hindu girl you please call that an offense please call it a crime do not label it as love jihad so there they do not want labeling although the numbers are very high very high thousands and lakhs of cases and many many people have even went to the supreme court of india and uh, in in uh, mob lynching they even two even two killings even two numbers would be so big for them that they would start labeling it so that is how they this is this is the double standards that they have and um, another example very recent example farmer agitation we are seeing against farm farmer laws like uh, almost 6000 farmers are protesting and uh, out of 700 million farmers 700 million farmers almost 6000 are uh, not accepting the laws or maybe confused and uh, that is like around 0.001% and they are building that narrative all the anti national forces are trying to hijack that confusion of farmers or maybe their questions and they've hijacked that movement and they've started building a narrative against bharat okay uh, farmers are being treated like this in india so this is how they do it and they have different tools of doing it they have media uh, they have social media and uh, they have uh, movie celebrities and people you know who have that influence on people's psyche and people who have good social connects and um, they 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 all do it together it is as you rightly mentioned in the beginning it's a coordinated effort by all these uh, anti bharat forces and they do it together and we need to understand it and we need to fight against it and uh, we need to actually look beyond the groups that they've created for us and uh, join hands and walk together and only then we can fight with these forces because they are very dangerous they're very smart and they're very coordinated and they have money they have power so it is very important that we must realize uh, to unite and stand together against them only then we would be able to defeat them namaste We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyawad. Namaskar.